Hey everyone, it's Mike Andes. Today we're gonna to be sharing with you a keynote from Landscape Summit 2023, the entire thing. Uh, I think you're gonna really enjoy it. It's gonna walk you through exactly how to grow a business to a million dollars plus, and the steps and the things you need to focus on at each stage of growth. It's, it's gonna be super helpful if you're in home services or any small business. Two call, major call to actions I want, to, we want you to do. Number one, if you're watching this right away, uh, this coming weekend, I'm doing a free online conference for the people that couldn't make it, and we have new material. So if you wanna join, go to mikeandys.com slash cutting edge. It's the cutting edge conference. It's gonna be three days. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You only need about an hour, hour and a half each morning. We're gonna release some more keynotes. So mikeandys.com slash cutting edge, sign up. There's a limited number of spots and there's something really special I wanna share with you on the last day. Also, if you want all the keynotes and the recordings from Landscape Summit, go to landscapebusinesscourse.com. It's gonna be available for all the members there. No extra charge. We're constantly updating the course and adding more content and the lectures and the... Uh, the uh, keynotes from conference will be added in there here pretty shortly. So thank you so much. Enjoy the keynote. Take care. Let's go. All right. Everyone outside is going to miss out on money. So that's going to be problematic. You guys want to yell, get them all inside? I know we're cutting things a little bit sooner, but got to catch up. Cool. All right, can we bring up the lights just a tad bit for me, Zach? Okay, so who actually did a follow-up call on the break and sell a job? Stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up. I know there's more. Yeah, good, very good. Okay, stay standing. Okay, for all the latecomers, we're standing up only if you sold a job. So you sold a job on the break, with a phone call. I know there's a whole bunch of you. I did a text message. We said phone call. All right. So how much did you sell it for? 1,070. Sit down if you're less than that. Losers. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. 2,900. If you're less than 2,900, sit down. Oh, folks. What do we got here? 3,170. 7,300, we have a winner! What's up, brother? I got it. All right. $500, do the follow-up call. I told you, 30 minutes, one job closed. All right? Now, um, we will keep the lights down just so there's not public embarrassment. Who did not do a follow-up call? Oh, there's so many more of you. That's actually pretty good, fantastic. Thank you very much. That's like one out of 15 approximately that got it. So great job. Give yourself a round of applause. A big thanks to the Franchise Advisory Council for putting all those banners up. They literally put PVC together and all the rest of it. Thank you so much. UPS dropped the ball. Thank you for picking it up. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about the journey from labor to architect. That is the title of the keynote for a bit. How this presentation will make you money. I'm going to give you the exact three step process to build your business faster and with more profits. Sounds pretty good. Faster and may you make more money. Now, this is how the, the, the original presentation started off a lot of graphs and charts and some pretty confusing stuff. Very, very in-depth, very educational. However, instead of doing that, I figured we'd talk about the three little pigs. Very educational topic. And I want to make this as simple as possible, and then I'm going to build on it. So please stay with me as I kind of build out some of this, what seems like very simple. Contrarian opinion that I have is that the straw and wood houses might actually be the better, more efficient choice to build if you're trying to have long-term success down the road. Everyone always thinks the brick house is what you must, must build from day one. I think not. The brick house is the goal. We all want a business that is solid and secure and that the big bad wolf doesn't come blow down. However, it doesn't mean that you should start with building a brick building. Now follow along with the humor of this kind of trivial example because we're going to tie it back into how it relates to our business. Now here's proof 
to support the straw pig. If you're building a straw house, you can build it much faster. I can get the reps that is required to figure out the architecture and how to build a building in general. I can practice. It's also safer because if, guess what? If I mess up on a straw building, not a big deal. If I mess up on a brick house, some serious damage is happening. Might get somebody hurt. Same thing can happen in businesses. Sometimes people will try to build too big of a business, our crazy big business, and guess, guess what happens? People get hurt. Relationships get hurt. Health gets hurt. So sometimes it's actually better to start off with the straw building. Also, it's faster. I can iterate faster on building a straw house. Again, follow the analogy, because what I want to show here is that if it's going to take me 10 years to build a brick house, it would actually be faster and more efficient if I'd actually just take one year to build the straw house, two years to build the wood house, and then three years to build the brick house, totaling six years total instead of 10. So I came to the same result, but in a shorter amount of time, safer, and I was able to get practice along the way. Following the steps in order has the greatest outcome. The straw house, then the wood house, and then the brick house. And you'll build the house faster and with better quality. Now I think of business the same way. And some of this will be a little bit of a repeat from last year. And I want to dig into a little bit deeper though. Following the steps of growing your business has the greatest outcome. It'll let you build the business faster and with better profits. And many of the times you will look at somebody and say, I want to build this million dollar business. And if you go try and start building that brick house today, you get hurt, it could take you longer, and you could make less profit. And we don't want any of that. So when we took a look at this analogy of, of the, the straw, the wood, and the bricks, there are certain skills that are required to be successful every single stage of building the house. If I am building a house out of straw, I need to be a very good laborer. Why? Because there are a lot of pieces of straw that need to get picked up. And I'll have to run around and grab it, and it'll be a very a taxing when it comes to labor. And I'll have to go find it, lots of straw, it's very light, I have to go build the structure. It takes a lot of work. Now when it comes to building a wood house, I now have a resource that is somewhat more expensive and is a little harder to find. I might have to go cut down trees, I might have to have some sort of process to get the t timber into planks and into wood panels, and I start to build a house out of wood. But now I need to manage the laborers to go out and get that wood because it's a more precious resource. It's less common than just a bunch of straw. Now when it comes to a brick house, the skill that is required at this stage of business, i.e. this building of a house, is an architect. You need to know how to structure the bricks so they don't fall down. Getting all the grout and the foundation is extremely important when you're building a brick house. I can get away with a pretty lousy foundation if I'm building a straw house, but I can't do that if I'm building a brick house. Rushing to building the brick house is going to lead to a lot of pain. Rushing to go build a brick house is what potentially could lead to broken relationships and guess what? Less money in your pocket. And I find many people go on this quest to be able to go build a brick building, i.e. an incredible business, but because they haven't followed the other steps of building a straw house and a wood house, they fail to have the skills required to be an architect and build the business correctly and in the right steps. Now, at each one of these stages, when we think about the straw, the wood, and the brick, and I know this is a little bit of a different talk than our last one, which was much more, a lot more energy, I want to lay these in for tomorrow for a couple things that we're going to go over. When you're building the straw house, and you're having the mindset of a labor. In your business, that is from zero to $200,000 in annual revenue. All right? From zero to $200,000 in annual revenue, your mindset, the skills that are required, are a laborer's mentality. And the skills that are required to succeed and be most profitable at that stage of business is a laborer's mindset. Now, the skills that are required from $200,000 to $800,000 are very different. Because you can work your fingers to the bone, work 80 hours a week like I did in year five of my business, and see absolutely no results. Why? 
Because my business was no longer in that correct stage. I was no longer in zero to 200 where the focus that I needed to be constantly growing was my labor. Now it was the skill of management. I needed to learn how to take others' resources of labor and turn it into something profitable. And that's the skill that is required to succeed at $200,000 to $800,000 in annual revenue. Who here in this room is in that stage? Raise your hand. Very good. Now, let's go through each of these stages, and I want to talk about the mentality and the skills that are required at each step and stage of the business. First is the labor. And everyone that has employees, this is your ideal candidate to be an employee. But it's also the skills that are required for you as an owner to have if you're going to be the most profitable at this stage of growth. The skills of this labor is attention to detail, organized, high hour capacity. In other words, you can work all day long in the blazing heat and be fine. Be great. I need these in my business as employees, but also if you're an owner and you're doing 100,000 in revenue, these are the skills that are going to make you most profitable at that stage of business. If you understand seasonality and the demand of each service, this is one of the biggest things I see owners really struggle with in their first few years is do not understand the demand curve of spring rush. And they'll either overhire, they'll overinvest emotionally and in the, the business way too much at certain parts of the year and flip that at the opposite time when they need to be actually engaged more and they fail to do so. Understanding that wave of spring rush is extremely important. Understanding that at this size of business will make you more money. The technical and mechanical skills at this stage are very important. And this is the whole big discrepancy about whether or not equipment is so important in this industry because it is very important if you're at zero to 200,000. Because you can double your efficiency with the, uh, an upgrade on your mower. So this, this skill of a great labor is that what you need at this size of growth to be successful and make the most profit. And the type of leadership that you're having at this stage is leadership by example. So if you get an employee and start having team meetings with your one employee, and you're like, we're going to do one-on-one -on -one reviews and an off-site meeting, and I had this great book I read about leadership, it's not going to fly. What's going to work really well is you working like an absolute dog in front of them and then they following in your footsteps because leadership by example at this stage is very important. Now let's get set on the next uh, stage of growth which is the manager skill that is required to build the business at its most profitable point from $200,000 to $800,000 in annual revenue. This is your ideal general manager. But it's also the skills that are required for you as the owner to have and to perfect if you're going to be the optimal profit during this size of business, 200,000 to 800,000. Following systems and procedures, working with the team and scheduling, strong leadership in team meetings. They have good eye contact. They're able to engage an audience of a bunch of dudes that just woke up. Understanding marketing and sales delegates non-sales activities, especially as they get to six, seven, eight hundred thousand in annual revenue, you need to start being able to delegate as a manager. You can't put on your boots and just do it for them. That's the laborer's mindset. Loves perfecting and refining processes instead of strategy. You heard the, the, the team up here this morning, the leadership team talking about how they just kept talking about how they like follow systems and procedures and they just execute and they fat follow the pattern. That's because they're all great managers. They're fantastic at this. That's the type of person you're looking for. You don't need them to be as creative as much as just follow the systems. Because I'm at 200,000 to 800,000 in revenue and I need you to execute on this. And that we can say that for a manager, but the same is true for you as an owner. Getting creative at 200,000 to 800,000 and coming up with brand new ideas every single week and try to get the org chart of your business or organized is the wrong stage of business to be focused on that. If you're trying to optimize profit at that stage of business. The third and final stage is 800,000 plus. And I give you these exact numbers. Obviously there's flexibility and it's a gray area. But I want to give you exact so you can place yourself exactly in these stages. Now an architect motivates and inspires the operators and managers that are underneath them. They don't meddle in the operations of the manager. This is why a lot of people fail once they start getting middle management. They start meddling 
in what the GM should be doing on a daily basis. Guess what? You're out of operations now. So get your hands off it and let them do their job. Large enough vision for an operator or manager to have their own vision inside. If it's just you, us four, no more, my family's going to get rich, you might not be able to attract really great managers that also have a vision, and you'll need to expand your vision in order to retain, because their vision needs to be able to grow inside of yours. And that's why you'll lose some people, is because their vision out, out, uh, supersedes yours, and you'll have to expand the architect and grow the business, but that takes a strategist to start thinking about where the business is going. Mergers, acquisitions, partnerships, strategic deals is required of that skill of an architect. Creating deals, managing in a way where the managers underneath you are, are enabled to be able to do f so solid management inside of the daily operations. And you're assessing risk. You're taking a ri looking at analyzing the growth opportunities of the business. Now building the business in the wrong order will keep you poor. Now we talked about in our second keynote about getting rich. We're all very excited about that. But I do not want to see you be poor either. See, why do we want to be rich? Because what we talked about the very first thing this entire couple days together here at the conference, there's something that you are making money for, and that gasoline, that energy will propel you forward faster and more efficiently if you follow these steps and make more money. So what happened if these steps are not followed in order? Because what I'm telling you today is I, all want, to, I want you, if your goals align with it, to build the million dollar business. I just don't think the skills that are required to build a million dollar business is what you should focus on from day one. And people will look at myself or influencers or other people and think, I need to do that, what they're doing. And that's going to lead to a wreck. And building a brick house when you have not the skills to manage or strategically align what the architect is supposed to be doing with the blueprint. So these are the skills that are required for each stage of business. Now, what happens if these steps are not being followed? And you all have seen recently as we've been doing the turnaround videos, you see me identify certain things inside of what's happening with the owners. This is what I'm thinking. Okay, that's what all those complicated graphs before were all about. I was explaining it. This is so much better. Three little pigs. I love it. All right, so what happens if the person that is doing zero to $200,000 starts to think like a manager? So instead of them focusing on being the best laborer, they focus on being a great manager. And they're reading all the books, and I'm going to be the best boss, and you're literally doing $50,000 in annual revenue. What you should be focused on to maximize profit at that stage is the mentality and the skills associated with that of being a laborer. And if you don't, and you have this mentality that I'm going to be a great manager, but I've just started my business at 50000 in annual revenue, you're going to probably overhire a bunch of people. When people start getting out of these steps of growth, they have low cash and high growth. Why? Because they went to a conference and talked about marketing, and they went in $70,000 worth of debt to be able to just ramp their business up, but now they have low cash, whoops, not that one, low cash, high growth, and a lot of times they have a whole bunch of debt. Fancy equipment, a lot of times. This is a laborer or a manager starting to think like an architect. And they're starting to architect and create and strategize about their tax strategies of their 1099s. And then they're, I'm going to write this off, so section 179 this. And you're doing 50000 in annual revenue. Focus on working eight hours a day instead of seven hours. Focusing on a more, more, uh, more efficient route so you get more jobs done will serve you more and you'll make more profit at that stage of business. And the reason why I say this it's because this is why people quit. This is why people work in this industry for three years, four years, and they're unprofitable because they're trying to build the business in the wrong order, and it will keep you poor. The same is true if someone is doing 800000 in annual revenue, and all of a sudden, they start jumping back in the field. This is going to cause bad communication because all of a sudden, phone calls don't fall through the cracks. All of a sudden, 
They're working so hard in the daily operations and mowing the grass and pulling the weeds and all. Their crew went three hours without their communication and they had a flat tire. They have an $800,000, $900,000 business and they have middle level managers and they're jumping in and trying to act like a manager. And they're telling the manager what to do. Why did you hire them? They're supposed to be a manager. They manage, you architect. That's the process and the steps that will lead to a more profitable business. All right. Let's see if this works. And action. He's going to have to get into the habit, and he needs, like, us and Will to hold him accountable to stay out. You shouldn't be worrying about emails coming in and complaints or someone worrying about credit cards on file. That's admin. You just focus on selling. He provides services for all the Taco Bells yep. in New Hampshire. Yep. He wants to fertilize all those companies without getting paid for it. You can do some examples, mm -hmm. but don't broadcast it everywhere as free. So I have friends that are like, Jake, stay out of the field, stay out of the field, but I'm comfortable with it. So I think it's, that's what I'll do, and I'll let all this important stuff build up. Then it just becomes too overwhelming. You will not be able to grow, keep doing what you're doing. You, are, you have a foot in sales, you have a foot in operations, and you have a foot in admin. That is not sustainable. It's bad for the business. It's really, really demoralizing for the to top performers. Like, low performers want you to step in because they don't know how to do their job. The top performers, though, they're just annoyed. And just worry about being the best salesman? The best salesman, the best quality control person, and furthermore, what you already cut, kick butt at is a great leader. Can you give it up for Jake and Michaela? Stand up. Let's go. Jake's out. Sounds like they've raised all their prices and we're back on track. Let's go. Cool. So, in the case of the three little pigs, I know some of you are wondering, who is the big bad wolf? Stress. We've talked about this before, but I want to tie this in with what we just talked about in terms of the size of your business and the stages at which you should grow it to be most profitable aligns so happily with the big bad wolf and the huff and the puff that will blow your house down unless you follow the order in which a business ought to be built. The first stages of growth, zero to 200,000 in annual revenue. At this stage, you're going to have physical stress. It's going to be a lot of work. Long days and just brutal physically. And I've talked about before, at this stage, you will desire to grow because you're like, oh man, this is so hard, it's so stressful. It's just a different type of stress because as you grow a business into 200,000 to 800,000 annual revenue, you have financial stress. Why? Because now you hire people and your gross margins drop through the, drop through the floor. Because you're not used to hiring people and having trucks and a shop space because you used to do it out of your garage. And Billy down the street used to help you on the weekends. And you were able to grow to 200,000 to be super profitable. You worked like a dog, but 200,000 to 800,000, now all that overhead starts to build up. And that's when you don't have any money in the bank, and you're like, this business stinks! And in reality, you just built the business in the wrong order. At 800,000, at that size of business, a lot of times the stress you have is psychological. You have a lot of people depending on you every single day. Something bad happens. You want an example? Live? Copilot went down for almost 50 minutes right before I walked up here. Because I was trying to push something out for tomorrow. What was that? It was an architect jumping into the manager's role trying to push something through and messing things up. I give that example so you don't do it in your own business. If you're an architect, 800,000 plus, the psychological stress you have will only compound if you start dealing in other areas of the business that you shouldn't be. Because at every single stage of this growth, yes, there's different types of stress. How do I deal with the big bad wolf? How do I build my business at the stage it's at to be most profitable and withstand the stress that's coming my way? You adopt the focus and the skills that are required for each stage of growth. At physical stress at 200,000 uh, 200, or less, you need to adopt the mentality of being a great laborer. It would be a great idea to go talk to your dealer and figure out how to fix your mower. It would be a great idea 
for you to be able to go shadow someone even if they're across the country. Talk to an Augusta franchisee, we don't believe in competition, stuff like that. So go talk to them and be like, hey, can I just work with you for free for a day? The skills you get in doing so will absolutely help you at that size. I'm like, man, that's a really efficient way of holding the weed whackers. That blower is so much better. I literally did that in half the amount of time. That's what you should be focused on at that size of business. But building your business in the wrong order will keep you poor. And what happens when you start to focus on these other aspects of skills and the things that you can learn and educate and absorb yourself in, if you do it at the wrong size of business, when you're facing a different wolf, a different stress, it will cause havoc. Case in point. I wouldn't recommend the GM being a role at a million, right? GM, in my mind, is someone that can get you to 800,000 and manage everything. They're the general manager. And that's what you've been so far. And I think that's been a role that's served you well. But like getting past that, a general manager can't do ops and sales. Like you guys have just done really good off the back of you guys working crazy hours, right? And so now it's a matter of like delineating those three roles, admin, ops, sales. Right now, these are all like, every single one looks like this. It's both of you. You just feel like you're fighting fires all day long. You never have a clear direction. You get up in the morning and you're like, I just know there's gonna be a bunch of bad stuff happening that I have to fix, but I, I don't know. know stuff. I don't know <laughs> what is gonna what it's gonna look yeah. like. It, the back and forth is the key part that kills you because no one knows what they're responsible for, right? And the guys will get confused too. Yeah. So as long as it's just a matter of like this is the direction we're going, which is more delineated. Yeah. But until then, we might have some crossover. Yeah. But then when it's like, hey, I'm stressed out of my mind. I'm working too many hours. Okay, great. Where's your name on this list, and what can I take away from you? Or can we delegate to someone else? And so I feel like. To go to 1.5, you have to delineate those two, two roles. Like, there's a full-time estimator, they do everything to the sales. Yep. And then you have this ops person that is like fully with the crew. They're managing them, they're, they're optimizing the route, they're doing all of that. Yep. And then the question just comes, becomes, can you afford to go to that three-person model, right? And split that, because it costs money. Yeah. And that's where I know the struggle is right now, and I know exactly what that feels like. Because like, that's why I did sales and ops for so long. Either that, or you just take over admin, yep. and you, you don't have an ops person. Like that's the profitable $800,000 thing to do. What was that? That was a company going past 800,000, moving out of two managers operating a business and there needed to be an architect take the company over and create structure in the business. Simply Lawn Care, can you stand up? Let's give these guys a round of applause. Great sports, those people that just stood up, by the way, it is not easy for me to walk in to these businesses when they're at their lowest moment. Commenters, if you guys could all just do one thing for me and just boot people that are saying negative things about these owners, I really appreciate them for being so vulnerable and I'd ask that you'd give them another round of applause, all those individuals. <laughs> Building the business in the right order will keep you from being poor. So if keep building the business in the wrong order keeps you poor, building the business in the right order will keep you from being poor. And I, for one, don't want to be poor. Anyone else with me? Can we get a let's go? Let's go. So if you're at zero to 200,000 in annual revenue, focus on being a great laborer. Be okay with starting in the dirt and getting dirty. It might be a good idea to not listen to all the super fancy 100, 200, 300 million dollar business owners talking about their strategies of private equity and the stock market and investing in real estate. You might be the best and most profitable form of yourself and your business if you put your boots on every single day and just grind and work hard. And getting around people with that same mentality will serve you better in the short term because you will have to graduate to the next stage of growth if you are to grow the business. But I find so many people will quit because at the stage at which they should be building straw, they pull out bricks and relationships get messed up and profitability gets wrecked and their balance sheet's a mess because they started trying to build a business using skills that were not applicable to their size of business. Be okay with starting in the dirt getting dirty. You know where our foundation starts? Not on the top of the mountain, not on the top of the, the, the sky and seeing a beautiful view. It's in the dirt. 
Be okay with that. It's a good place to start the business. And the reason it's important is because it will make you more money. If you are in 200,000 to 800,000 in annual revenue, focus on being a great leader. The books that were mentioned in some of the other keynotes about management would be an excellent read. Patrick Lencioni, many other authors writing about this stage of management and figuring out so important because otherwise you'll never go beyond this stage of growth being profitable. And you'll spin your wheels, oh it's the labor market, I can't find employees, no one wants to work, this generation is lazy. You got to figure out how to be a great manager in today's world, using today's wood, today's resources and build a business that's profitable. Focus on being an awesome leader and efficiently organizing the team to do the later. Labor, it will make you more money. Stop being focused on the next cryptocurrency and the next real estate deal. I'm going to go sell cars. I'm going to sell courses. I don't know what about, but it's going to be great. I don't know why I started doing that. <laughs> and we're going to build a wall. It's going to be a ceramic wall. It's going to be fantastic. Biden's going to pay for it. But at this stage, you must organize the labor inside your business. And focusing on the skill of being a great manager will make you the most money. If you are in the size of business from 800,000 plus, you need to focus on building the infrastructure. Stop putting on your boots. Stop being what I thought was a great leader by jumping out into the field and doing things for people. You're messing everybody up. You're stripping the power away from your managers and you're showing the guys out in the field that you'll never architect a great enough building for them to grow their career. You need systems, procedures, and most of all, empower your managers to do, do, do the building for you. Why? It will make you more money. So I've talked about the different stages of building your business. The straw house, zero to 200,000. The wood house, what size is that? 200,000, 800,000, and the brick house is 800,000 plus. We've talked about the different stages of building this house, but who wants the blueprint? Can I get an amen, a hallelujah, a let's go, something? All right, you'll have to come to the next keynote. Thanks, guys.